All right, uh, welcome. My name is Nick Bonner. I have Taylor Hamill here, uh, our esteemed guest. We're at ArborFest Expo, and this is the treestuff.com DIY micro rigging lab. We're here on the show tree. Taylor is going to show us how to take this limb in one or two cuts in a kind of a more traditional way. And then I think we're going to look at a lifting technique, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, Taylor is the DMM technical representative. He represents DMM uh, in all of North America. You also do some work for Teufelberger as well? A little? Yeah, no? we have a relationship. Good, so that's awesome. Uh, but if you need anything uh, from DMM, you can always send Taylor an email. Uh, what's your email address? Taylor at DMMWales.com. Very good. Taylor, uh, take it away. Awesome, thanks Nick. It's great to be here. Love it. <laughs> so let, let, let's look at a common problem that you, you would face dismantling a tree. We've got a rel relatively long limb here, um, and not a, we don't have the, the space below it to take the whole limb. So typically, yeah, we've got a structure or something there. So what we might do in that case, set a block up high and take the piece in two or three different cuts. Uh, that, sometimes that's a great way to do it. Other times, like in this scenario, if we look at where the climber might be positioned and swinging these things back into the trunk, might put the climber in, in, the, in harm's way. Um, so let's just look at a few different things we can do to, sure, to deal with that. So one would be if we have our block here back at the base of the tree, all right, um, tie on the end. Let's say we're gonna take this in two pieces, tie this on here. I won't do any cutting just yet. Um, make our notch cut it, let it float back into the tree. And this now, is to signify weight here. Okay, this sure. Is so a oblong limb, so yeah. this is a little heavier than just regular brush. Okay, yeah, so this is also out of balance. When you make this cut, this heavy, heavy part of the limb is gonna swing down. How's that on the audio, that talking over us? That's okay. Um, so we, we do that a lot, tie the, tie the limb on. I'm just gonna do a couple half hitches here. I wouldn't actually tie half hitches, but we're just in a hurry. So there we go, put a little tension on it, put it through the porter wrap, make my cut here and, and let it swing, okay? Sure, that's a great way to do it. If you can keep yourself out of harm's way, let's look at some other options. That's swinging back into the tree. If we have a spot for a, a different redirect above, Perhaps we could set this up through a redirect to change that angle a little bit. We get less rope swing. We can keep the climber on the right side of the limb. It's definitely not going to come back way. to the trunk. Right. Wouldn't come back to the trunk necessarily. So that's another option. If you have that, put the, I keep looking over there, thinking I'm on camera that way. Um, yeah, keep that work away from the climber. Another option would be uh, either using natural friction or we could place uh, a block or a pulley further out on the limb, redirect the rope through that, right, make our... simply butt catch it. Yep, cat, butt catch it that way, but maybe that'll put us right over the structure as we have here and we would need then a tagline to pull it away. But if you were going to do a butt catch here, mm -hmm. and you were going to do this, you'd rather be redirecting up from here than just straight off of this, correct? Because you're putting this in compression then. Right, Let, yeah, let's look at that quickly. If I did tie, a, tie a, uh, a block or a pulley here, I'm not gonna dress it up perfectly, but you get the idea. Got, a, got our block, and say we just took our rope straight up from the ground through that, tied this on, and cut that off. When that does come off, now we've got all you know, of our roughly, right here. roughly double the force. Uh, that's just a roughly. We there's friction and things like that. And, but right now we've got all this force acting out on this lever. So it's better to redirect back if you can, as much as you can. And if you've got the 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 height for it, you know now this redirect here will see almost no weight, but it'll but it'll help us direct the load. Cool. Yeah. And I say almost no weight with a grain of salt. There, we're doing this quickly, so we can't go through all the physics. Should we do that? Should I just cut it that yeah. way? And we'll yeah, see what happens. Let's cut it that way and see what happens. All right, let's do it. Get my uh, cow hitch tied here. Here we 
These are super cool little slings. Nick's tying it up for us. So now I make a decision. Do I want to take just the end? Do I want to take the whole thing? Looks to me like if I take this whole thing, we're going to swing in and probably impact the house, right? So put your safety glasses on, everyone. I'm going to fire up my chainsaw here. Vroom, vroom. Got it. Um, I'm not going to bother doing a notch on this one because it's kind of complicated to get it in there. But let's just make a cut. Try not to cut our rope. And thank you, Nick. I'm much, much better with a chainsaw. A lot of leverage from cutting that far out on this, this model as well. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this rope, I know it. So this right. might have been a great application for a snap cut. Snap cut, sure. So we're gonna just let that peel over, finish that. All right, there so we, we are, just narrowly missed the edge, missed of, the the edge of the house. It almost looks like we might still need a tagline. I think we're good, this, I think we can go. Down safely, yeah, I mean, see, you're scratching the yeah. house there. Nah, it's just brush, man, it it's ain't gonna hurt brush. it. All right, so we got one piece off. Groundy runs that rope back up to you. Yep, got one piece off. Now we can do the next. And so now you kind of have to take this by itself, don't you? I would say so in this scenario. All right, so let's tie that on, zip it off. Oh, so you wouldn't just swing this back to the trunk then. You'd still butt hitch it here. Well, let's say we're doing that just to keep the climber safe. Okay. Safe, general term. So this is, you'd ask them to tighten up here, right? Yep, I'm gonna have them put tension on it. I'm gonna call clear all that nonsense that we do. Let that go. Obviously my saw would be out of the way. Now we're looking good. Well clear of the house. So we've made two cuts. We've made two cuts. Now there's some benefits to that. A, we're taking smaller cuts, so there's generally less load on our anchor points. Uh, in this case, we've decided to use a, um, a system that keeps our climber out of the rigging, that keeps pieces from swinging back toward our climber and back, back into the trunk. So at this point, we would just continue chunking this down, maybe move this back, take one more piece, another sure. piece to stub it. Yep. I think let's dispense with that and go in and see kind of a better way to look at this. A different way, Nick. A different, a different, different way. way. We're gonna, we're gonna swap out limbs. Which is one of the great things about the DIY micro rigging lab is that people can come, they can see us at events, do this, um, and they can do it both both ways, right? The old way, the new way, um, and see the difference in their application directly. Yep. Uh, I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, this is quite clever. I like it. All right, let's get this one Color out of here. Color coded. Hold that so for me. What we'll talk about here is, is r lifting this limb, raising the limb with a GRCS or a, or a Hobbs or, or other system. Um, double whip tackle. Double whip tackle. What, that's what we're gonna demonstrate here is double whip tackle. And I'll talk a little bit about the, the benefits of that and some warnings as well. God, this thing is threaded poorly. So I can't get my ratchet to work. There we go. There it is. That feels pretty good. Cool. So, on there, let's add our weight. We got to weight in this limb like we did before. Nice. Create the same problem. All right, perfect. All right, cool. So, with a little bit of weight here, we've got a limb that can possibly twist. We're going to need to deal with that somehow. So, we might just remove that first. But what I want to do is, I want to take this limb in one piece. I've determined that my anchor points are strong enough. Uh, I can, the climber can come back to the trunk, make the cut, get, get prepared, and then move into a safe area. Out of the way. Out of the way while the crew uh, lifts the limb. So we can clear our structure, we can keep it under control, we can keep the climber safe, and we can take it in one piece, maybe two pieces, which will also save some time. Yeah. So if we have the power, and we have a GRCS, for example, you know, I could just, we could just tie this rope on, make the cut, crank away. 
if we don't have a GRCS or we need a little more power, we can use what's called a double whip tackle, in which case I would put an impact lock Here? or, yeah, impact lock or pulley. This, um, I'll make, make a point here as well. It takes a, a little bit of practice figuring out where to tie the block onto the, onto the limb that you're removing. If you tie it out too far, you, you're gonna have a lot of lift uh, or a lot of distance to travel before that limb is, is standing upright. And you can run into issues depending on where you set your, your, your top block, your top anchor. So the, but the typical double whip tackle, in this case, <clears throat> we've, we're back on the trunk here, I've got my rigging line up and through. I'm going to pass that through this block. This feels like an excellent opportunity for a totally unplanned impromptu product plug. <laughs> so our block up here is in fact a DMM impact block. Taylor, why is this yeah. really well suited to be a top anchor for a double whip? Well suited because of the hollow spindle. So, um, so I can actually tie right through here. Yep, you can tie right through there. And, and that we, keeps we it can... all lined up. It actually prevents the ropes from running against each other. Uh, things yep. like that, and we've almost uh, shown that here with this sure. kind of becket on this. Yeah, I basically tied it into that becket, but the same idea applies with that with the large impact block. And uh, you could do the same thing by tying, uh, dead ending it instead of into the block. You could tie it around the trunk, but that takes up more rope. Not as not as fun. Very cool. That's port and port too. So, so what this I is have mechanical here, advantage. Mechanical advantage. Right, what I have here that. is. The ideal mechanical advantage here would be a two to one. I have a fixed block here, and I have the moving block because this is gonna stand up and move. So I count the two parts of line here, and that'll give me my ideal mechanical advantage of two to one. There's friction, of course, in the system, so we don't quite get to a two to one, but you do get an, an increase in mechanical advantage either way. So what I would do then, have the climber come back, make the cut and the ground crew would then through some whatever means we had we would tension and lift this up until it's standing upright the hinge wood would break at that point maybe go in there cut a little more of it away if we have to and then the limb is uh, to quote greg good we've just what we've done is quiet rigging you know we haven't let anything slam down or or go wild we're just cranking that up real nice and controlled until it's sitting there static and, and then we lower it to the ground. It's important that just because you've put a double whip tackle in place, that you don't think that that's just gonna magically allow you to pick the limb up. I mean, this is, like we said, the theoretical two to one mechanical advantage. So yeah. if you're not reasonably gonna be able to lift it with your, whatever your input force is, mm -hmm. then this might not be the best setup for you. You might need a mechanical force like a GRCS or something else. But Yeah, exactly. Don't get yourself into trouble. In our assumption, we're gonna say that our, our rigging team here believes uh, and knows, based on our experience, that we can lift this with whatever our input force is on this, this rope here. Yep. With the two to one advantage. We're gonna say that. Okay, cool. Yep, for sure. I think that's an important thing to specify. Yeah, and a, a, a word of caution here, when you are standing up limbs like this, now we've got our block set up pretty high and I'm confident that as this limb comes up, the, this block is not going to either end up two blocking with this or or worse yet being above it because now you've got some drop and hey the first first time I used a GRCS I did that you know I wasn't paying attention and so and you, you winched it up past winched up past and then I had to cut it off and let the limb fall and slide you know that's not and that removed fun. then you weren't over here anymore you were back over here again in the danger zone yeah, yeah. so yeah. That's you gotta not fun. De definitely plan for that you need to be able to have some spatial uh, recognition you know uh, and 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 determine where that block is going to end up. But so that was, you know, another thing too is, you know, you can always just reset, move the block in a little bit. So sure. I'm going to do that. Wasn't that easy? Good. Well, let's cut so it. I'll run the ropes for you. I'll sure. be around. You crew. run the ropes. I'll put a little notch in here. And I ideally, I would like this to break. Um, I would like the hinge to break when it makes, when you know, when we're finished with the lift and it makes contact. So um, you're actually kind of eyeing the angle of this notch to give it that this exact amount here. Yeah, I'm trying to, and I might have gone a little too far, but we'll see. So, 
So yeah, you ready, Nick? Yeah, let's tension okay. it up because we want to make sure that your hinge doesn't break. Yep, we'll tension it up. Now in this case too, we have to remember we've got this little extra bit of weight here. And that's up to me to determine whether or not this hinge is gonna is gonna keep that from rolling before we, we before we finish the cut. I think I'm o I'm okay with it. We'll I think you are too. It. It's definitely worth looking at though. Yep. Make sure I'm lined up here. These silky straight blade uh, saws are really great for the, cutting these notches on the model wooden stuff. Heck yeah. Although I probably should have safety glasses on. Tell me when, Nick. Uh, you're, you're pretty close on my side. Okay. About a millimeter or two. I would, yeah, I'd say that's a good, All right, good pretty let's, good. Let's see if we can lift this thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start applying my input force here. And I, I gotta say that with the mechanical advantage, this is very light. <laughs> so yep. here we are. Uh, your notch is almost closed. Kale, come on in here. Let's see the, the expertise here in Taylor's estimation. That notch is going to be Just the exact about. correct angle. And if we were to continue to winch it up, it's actually going to snap the hinge. Maybe. Oh, yeah, pretty close. Let's give it a wiggle. There we go. Boom, there it is. So we see the piece did tilt a little bit because of this weight, but given the fact that our climber was up here, uh, I think that's a pretty great result. Now we're able to lower this entire branch down, right, well away from the building. Yep. And feed it potentially straight into a chipper winch <laughs> and into, right into the truck. <laughs> and then also keep in mind you're using twice the amount of rope in the system, or maybe three. I'd have to think about that for a minute. So don't lose the end of the rope like Nick did. Taylor, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing this <laughs> no with worries. us. How to do a double whip tackle by Taylor Hamill and the treestuff.com DIY micro rigging lab. We'll be doing these uh, again. We've got uh, Ryan Torsicolo later today. We also did Mark Bridge and Mark Chisholm with limb balancing and crane picks earlier this weekend. Uh, those can be found on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, they're not on YouTube today, but they will be next week. Um, so if you're watching this later, they're probably on YouTube already. Sweet. But uh, definitely stop by, see us. Taylor's all over the country at events uh, representing DMM, and uh, we'd love to see you. Thanks awesome. so much. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Bye, everyone.